He's got it already. If you want the two that are here, Jim, if you want these fans, it's over here. Okay. Well, look at how much leash I have. Ready? <laughs> it's going to have to be enough for now. I suppose. Okay, so feet sit bones, or not sit bones with the part, but facing forward. Shift side to side. So it is a little different because you won't be able to see yourself in the mirror in front of you. Kind of boring just looking at me in this gray wall, huh? But you're on stage. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, I don't, I don't have the spotlights on. I could put the spotlights on. Hips, hips. Yeah, that would be fantastic, right? <laughs> and ribs. Shift your ribs. So just start to feel all these little joints wiggling and moving and reach out. Check in with your body from the foot to the head. Let your ear go to your arm. All right, you've got your vestibular system shaken up and your feet, let's keep going. So push off with your back foot, pushing off, there you go. Feel that stretch in the Achilles. What does it feel like to push through the first toe? So one idea, Jim, might be to turn your front foot in a little bit. That will give you a little more stability. And then other way, other direction, yes. And then just hang on to that little bar, bar there. Yeah, there you go. Now we're going to bend the knees. That's fine, Greg. You went early. It's no big deal. There you go. So for you, Sharon, I don't want your foot turned in because your knees uh, knock too much already. So you're just going to have to hang on if you have no low balance, okay? And hips back, hips forward. Not Correct. Hips forward, hips back. And ribs forward, ribs back. Really feel that in the spine. Feel your spine start to curl. A lot of us have a very straight spine for various reasons. Maybe you've had some back pain or you're just trying to avoid any injury. But there's a time when the back must start to move as well. So try to find your movement in the spine. Reach forward, grab something, toss it behind you. Think of those shoulder blades sliding forward on your rib cage and then squeezing back. If you want to add the looking up and looking down, tightening your core to keep you nice and safe and balanced and changing feet. Other foot in front. So I turn my front toe in, but Sharon, I think I like your toe forward and just hang on if you need balance. And try to write your, the back foot is towed out right now. Try to see if you can turn it. There you go, and push off with that big toe. As much as is tolerable. That's why you got the wall next to you. That's up to you. This is a morning warm up stretch, so it's okay. Bend your knees, shift forward, shift back. Shift forward, shift back. Going to turn up the music just a little bit. You guys can let me know if you can't hear me anymore, okay? <laughs> hips forward, hips back. Ooh, I got a wall too. And ribs forward, ribs back. Feel that spine start to move, curl. Reach forward, grab something, toss it behind you. Feel your shoulder blades be free and gliding. It starts to relieve some of that stress we hold up in the upper traps if you let them roll around. Look up and down if you want. All right, and let's do a roll down together. So my feet are sit bones width apart, straight forward. Take a breath in, reach up. Stretch that body. Oh, then let your arms melt down. Breath in and roll down one vertebrae at a time. 
Breath in. Let's bend your knees just a little bit here. And then straighten. And bend. And straighten. Try to keep your hands where they are, whether you're bent or you're straight. Try to keep your hands where they are. Unlock your knees a little bit. Take a breath in and tuck that tailbone under. Really try to pull with your behind muscles to roll yourself back up. Feel okay? Okay, sit to stand from here. <laughs> sit to stand, good. So if I think of my roll, you're gonna keep sitting to stand, but if I think of my roll down, I was curling my spine. Now instead of curling, I'm keeping my back flat. Right, so just try to keep those two uh, ideas in mind. Stability versus mobility. Stay here, breathe in, out. Breathe in and out. If you want, you can try to get a little more swing and really arch your back. It depends on how stiff you are. Otherwise, you can use control. Of course, my hand's hitting my wire a little bit. But... All right, pause. Bring both arms just forward in front of you. I want you to curl your spine and then straighten. See if your hands lift up a little. Curl and straighten. Curl, curl your spine and straighten. Curl, last one, and straighten. Dig a little deeper, three, two, one. All right, nice and wide. So my hands are tracing the line for my knees. So as I bend my knees, my hands are like a little guide, like, oh, come this way, knee. <laughs> oh, let me show you the way, it goes this way. So you're kind of guiding your knees with your hands. Roll to the outside of your foot if you can. That'll help roll your hips open and out. Meanwhile, keeping this core nice and tight so it goes straight down. Let's stay halfway down, nice and comfortable. Roll your palms up and your shoulders up, everything up, then everything down. Everything up, everything down. Everything up, everything down. You don't have to look up. If your neck is hurting you, just keep your head looking forward. And then we're gonna stay up, but notice how my ribs are sticking out now, so then I'm gonna line my ribs up, send a little energy through my fingertips, and go side to side, side to side. I feel like there's another person in the room because there's this person with a blue tank top there. And I'm correcting her. I'm like, oh, she's not quite right. Let me figure her out. <laughs> okay, pause here. We're going to rotate. If you need a little break, you can always take a break. Exhale, exhale. Inhale back. Inhale back. Exhale, exhale. Inhale back. Good. Go ahead and pause and walk your little feet together. We'll reach one hand up, one hand down, and just shift there. Relax, then pull. Relax, then pull. So one hand is reaching up like there's a little rope on the ceiling, and there's a rope on the floor, pulling my other hand down. Three. Straight up to the ceiling for me, Sharon. Two. Yes. One. Yes. Feel that difference? It's different than arching over, which collapses this too much. Other side, reach up to the ceiling, down to the floor. Good, and you might feel it in the shoulders too. So see if you can feel that, Carolyn, for me. The shoulder blade, one shoulder is reaching up as I reach up and the other shoulder is pushing down. So it's almost not just in the waist, but in the shoulder blades too. There, yeah, that looks better. More pushing on one shoulder blade. All right, shake that up. So you have a wall or something, Greg, you can use the floor. I want you to do a few plank to downward dog. So it can be on the floor or on the wall. I'll show the wall version. For Jim, you're gonna do the, bow, the bar. Plank to downward dog. Plank to downward dog. On the floor, it would look like this. Plank to downward dog. Three more. 
Really push with your shoulders, stretching the hamstrings on the downward dog, tightening your core on the plank. Then pause in your plank. Just find a nice spot where you feel your armpits are drawn down to your pockets in your plank. Straight arms for me. There you go. Tap one foot out wide, bring it back in. Other foot out wide, bring it back in. So stay right there in plank for me, Jim. Stay in a plank. Plank. There you go. Look at yourself in the mirror and just stay still with your arms and try tapping your foot out and in. Jim, don't do a push up, just stay in a plank. Tap your foot out and in. Good. Pause, go into your downward dog, that's your wrist. Now we're going to do the same thing with the arms. So back to your plank. One arm taps into the middle, back out, into the middle, back out. All right, give it a little plank, or sorry, downward dog for a rest. Step your feet in and roll on up or stand up if you're at the wall. So that's a little warm up, right? Feel okay there? <laughs> okay, so standing on one foot, we're gonna do a little swinging. So Jim, you're gonna hang on, okay? The rest of you, I think you're okay, Sharon. You can decide, swing this leg forward and back. Okay, so what I want is the standing leg is gonna be working hard. The swinging leg doesn't work very much. Mostly pendulum gets it moving, right? A little pendulous motion. It's the standing leg that's trying to hold you still. Good, belly button's pulled in. Swing out and across. If you want, you can swing behind as well. That's mostly the motion of the out and across your midline, whether it's in front or behind. And your standing leg is working hard little softness in that knee. Good. Now you're going to lift it up, then tip your body and kick back. Lift it up, tip your body and kick back. Again, you can hang on, a little hang on to the wall or the bar. That's what I'm suggesting for those that have a little balance challenge already. Otherwise, you can try not hanging on and just balance. Use your core, knee up, tip over, kick back. Notice my back stays fairly flat and straight most of the time, even when I go back, tightening my core. Two more. Last one. Good. Now, if you need a little break, you can take a little wiggle out. If you don't need a break, just stand on that leg. You can even wobble your ankle if you don't need a break. You're wobbling your ankle. If you do need a break, you're shaking it out, okay? Feeling okay? It should be in this uh, standing leg, not the swinging leg. Okay, a little more work for the standing leg. I want you to send your leg out and tilt your hips. So your leg stays out. It can touch the floor or not, but tilt your hips. So in my blue tank top, you see my blue tank top tilt. Okay, I'm going to try not to shift my body very much. There you go. That looks better. I'm watching myself. I'm going to try not to tilt my body, just tilt my tank top here at the lower edge. So you can also face the mirror if you're wondering how you look, Carolyn. And you've got a nice black tank top with your pants, right? So imagine tilting the tank top or the t-shirt so that the t-shirt tilts. Your foot just consequently lifts up. So Greg, it's not a leg lift. The leg is just staying there. It's my tank top that lifts. This should kill your standing leg if you're doing it right. If you don't do it right, you won't really feel much of anything. Okay, try two more. This is called a hip hike, modified hip hike. So rather than you stepping on a stair, oh my God, I'm dying. Okay, we gotta wiggle that out. So you should have felt it in the standing leg. It wasn't really a motion here. It was just getting that leg out of the way. If you were on a stair, I don't wanna be too dangerous, but if I was on a stair, I would hip hike here. You see how my foot has room to go below the stair, but we don't have that luxury here. All right, let's move to the other leg. That leg's tired. <laughs> swing forward, swing back. Now, what part of your muscle is tired on that standing leg? Your knee and your hip? Your, your front of your calf, you're saying, right? The anterior tibialis and your hip? What about you? You felt in your quad? Okay, what that tells you is what you used to hold yourself there. So I felt it mostly in the butt, not in my calf, but my foot was a little free. 
So you might be pushing down or lifting up quite a lot in the toes to really make that front work. Okay, I felt it mostly in the hip. That's where I was weakest. That's where I needed it the most. He felt it in his quad, right? That's probably what he was using the most to hold him still. Let's swing across. Oh, sorry, I'm on the same leg. No wonder I'm dying. I meant to go on the other leg. Did everybody else swap legs? I'm glad you're smarter than me, okay. Yes, yes. So everybody else but the lazy old instructor in the front swapped legs at that little intermission. Good, so the work is on the other standing leg. Good. Okay, now you've got the knee up, and then you tilt over and you kick behind you. Knee up, tilt over and kick behind you. And so for those of you in Zoom, you might have your hand on something to help with balance. Just let, gently use it. What we want to work is your standing leg. I want your standing leg to get a big workout here. This is similar to a single leg deadlift. So if you had a weight in you, you're using your glute as you tip over to right your body up. So as I'm tipped over, now I'm using the standing leg glute to squeeze and lift my body straight back up. How about two more? Good. Shake that out if you need it, and if you don't need a shake out, then you're gonna wobble your ankle while you're waiting for the rest of the people to shake it out. Okay, so everybody's at a different level. Everybody's got different things. So you definitely have to take the rest if you need it. Okay, the next one we're doing is tilting our tank top. So I have the leg out just so it's out of my way. Now I'm gonna tilt my tank top. So if you want, you can try. You know, some people need to hang on and that's perfectly fine. But you can have your hand on your hips and watch one hand get higher than the other hand. Good, so if you had your hand on your leg that's swinging there, Jim, you'd want it to lift up, right? The leg near the window. Good. Try to keep your body on top of your leg if you can. It's hard, but you try, because the tendency is to do this. I'm still working that hip if I do this, but not nearly as much as if I do this, right? If I lift with this butt cheek. The standing leg, it should, yes. How about three more? Because I want you to burn, 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 baby. You're dying, okay. That show, and you're dying in your glute, right? Yeah, that shows where you need to work, all of us. And for you, you have other reasons. He's dead, he's dying, he's dead. <laughs> okay, pretty good, wiggle those hips out. So this is the hula hoop, right? We have two kind of hip motions, the hula hoop and the belly dancer. This is our hula hoop, change direction, if you had that big ring around you, you'd be swinging that hip like the 50s, right? <laughs> all right, now bend your knees a little bit and just do the belly dancer. So now it's all happening in the hips. Your torso doesn't move, just your hips. This should loosen up your back. The last one loosened up your hips. This should loosen up your back. Change direction. Take it slow enough that you can really feel what's happening. Your back is working, your waist, your back extensors, your core. All right, feel okay? A Little bit more strengthening now. We're gonna do the calves. So if you have a wall somewhere, I need you to hang on to do a really good calf workout, okay? You're gonna lift up and down. Good. Now, we've already decided that in order to get stronger, you have to overload, right? I know you don't maybe like that word, but it's meant as a positive thing. Make work harder during your exercise class so that when you go out and you do it in real life, it's not as hard, <laughs> okay? So usually, if I were in a weight room, I'd put 30 pounds on your shoulders or 60 pounds or something to make this harder. But we don't have that, so all we can do is take away one of your, ability, one of your feet. Okay, so now I'm gonna slide up and down. So if I'm on the wall here, it's easy. I can put my foot on the wall and it kind of secures me and helps me with stability. This is not a balance challenge, but this is building the muscles that keep your balance. As you're lifting up, you're trying to lift up on the first toe and the fifth toe, right? Make sure even all five toes, or it's not really the toes, but the metatarsals are helping you there. If you can, I want you to stay up. Stay up at the top 
squeeze your quad, squeeze your calf, squeeze your buttock, squeeze everything on this leg, squeeze, 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 and we're going to pulse at the top for 10 pulses. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, shake it out. That should give you a nice burn. Yep, you can go for a walk. Now we're doing the second leg. So I'm using my wall quite a bit, and my leash is at its end of the tether. Can you pull me a little closer? Thank you, thank you, that's better. <laughs> All right, so we do about 10 here. You're thinking about your calf working. You're even of the first toe all the way through the fifth metatarsal. Not really the toes, metatarsals. I like the wall because it keeps me straight up and down and it allows me a balance. So it's not a balance issue that I'm working on, it's pure calf. And to be honest, when I do this in the weight room, I use a bar that's stabilized by a machine. It's called the Smith machine, so that I'm not worried about balance. You can concentrate on only so many things at one go. All right, that's 10, so we stay up. Stay up, squeeze it, squeeze your quad, squeeze your calf, squeeze your buttock, squeeze everything on that side, and let's pulse for 10. Down and up, down, up, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, squeeze, 3, Two, one, shake it out. Oh boy, boy, boy. Woo! Did you feel the burn all the way up through the back of your leg? Good. In the back of your knee? Okay, if not, you might have just bent the knee a little bit because it was easier, right? There's this little bit that you might bend. Try to really squeeze when we're doing that one. Now we're doing the bent leg one. So I want you to squat down. If you have the wall behind you, if you don't, you can just hang on, squat down. Now you're gonna keep the same angle here and lift up on your toes, okay? So your body will come up a little bit. See, James, how my body does lift up a little bit? Yeah, you have to concentrate on the same angles. So if I'm here at the wall, I'm not gonna be straight up and down at the wall, probably. Well, I guess I can, but I still slide. My knees are still bent. Try to balance on all five metatarsals. Okay, you're gonna stay up. Then one goes down and the other stays up. I'm prancing. Then you swap. Then you swap. My body stays still. My legs are prancing. There was a prancer size exercise group once where they walk around the forest prancing like this. <laughs> Good. All right, give it a little rest. Do you think you're up for doing that single leg? If not, don't do it. Stay with the double leg that we just practiced. Otherwise, you're going to try to do single leg. So one leg is out. I'm using the wall because I don't want this to be my balance throwing me off. I know in the camera it's hard to see. I'll show from the side. I'm trying to keep my angle of my body the same and just go up and down. I've only got about the tolerance of eight personally, but you can see how many you got the tolerance for. We're gonna try that hold at the top. So now I can't squeeze my leg and quad. I've just got my calf squeezed. And I'm gonna pulse for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Oh my goodness gracious. Whew. Now that one I felt my quad because my quad was holding a prolonged squat, right? But mostly in the soleus. So that one worked the soleus compared to the gastroc. So you didn't feel it in the back of the knee, right James? Right, because the gas drug was not working in that case. It was a little bit, but not too much. All right, we're on the other leg. If you don't want to do single leg, you can do two, right? Going up and down, trying to keep my knee bent. I'm trying to keep all the rest of my angles the same bend. Good. Shine your knee out a little bit toward the, wind, or the mirror. That's it. It's going to be really hard. I'm adding one thing extra for you, Sharon. Is that about 10? Good. Bend the knee again, Jane. Oh, Greg. There you go. Then stay up. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. So you're squeezing your calf. Your quad is on this prolonged squat, which is kind of killing it. We got 10 pulses. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Oh, my goodness gracious. All right. Let's stretch that out. Okay. You've got your wall. You've got your bar. Stretch out one calf. The runner's stretch is where your leg in the back is straight 
and you push your hips forward. If your heel comes off, it's okay. It's not the worst case scenario, but you're trying to push your heel down. Straighten the back leg for me a bit more. There you go. Now bring that back foot in about two or three inches and then bend the knee. You're still weight bearing on the back leg. Bend the knee in the back. There you go. You've got it. There you go. It was for Jim, the cue. Good. Swap legs. Other leg is behind. I'm trying to straighten that leg back there. The front leg is just for balance. Pushing my hips forward. Stretching the calf in the back. Every exhale, imagine that muscle getting longer. Then bring it in about two inches and bend the knee. Good. Now people that run a lot usually are pretty tight in this muscle as well as the ITB. Just because when you run, you don't really fully straighten all your limbs. You kind of land on a bent, bent limb. All right, shake that out. We got hamstrings to stretch and then we're moving on, okay? So for a hamstring stretch, I like you've got the bar there. I could use the wall as an example, but my behind will shine out. So if you have the bar, you're gonna hang your behind out, okay? And you're pulling on the kitchen sink or the bar or the chair. Stick your behind out, straighten your knees. That's it, flatten your back, stick your tailbone into the sky. Stick that tailbone up into the sky. If you need a little break, go ahead and soften your knees a little and then straighten them again and soften them just like we did with the roll down, but now you have a flat back. Bend and straighten so you don't have too much tension. If anybody feels any numbness, tingles in your toes, that's a nerve. So you don't want to stretch a nerve. Find to stretch your muscles, but don't let your nerves stretch. Numbness, tingles, hot pain, those are nerves, okay? Back it off. Shake it out. Feeling good? All right, it's 10 o'clock. We could go straight to the mat or we could do one more vestibular challenge. Who wants a vestibular challenge? Three people out of the five, okay. If you wanna to go to your Pilates now or if you want to do another three or five minutes of uh, challenge for your brain. Brain. brain, all right. So we're doing a vestibular challenge, which means that your head's gonna be moving around. You can even move your head and your body, but the point it is, is you're getting the water in those semicircular canals, your vestibular system, to start to move and stimulate, and your brain receives those messages and tries to keep you on two feet or one foot. So um, I know Lynn and Rob in the camera, we've talked about what position is good for her vestibular stimuli. She's doing this. I think, uh, Jim, you're going to be either doing this or this, right, where the heel and the toe match. I don't know about everybody else. You can be on one foot as well. Okay? Wobble your ankle. Make sure your ankle knows that its job is to wobble, right? If it stays still, you're just going to tip over, okay? So have a lot of mobility and wobble it around. Then tighten your core. Make sure your core knows its job is to stabilize here. All right, look right, look left. Your foot is down, Jim. Put your foot down, good, and let go. You don't get to hang on during this. Let go. That's right. There's no hanging on. You're gonna use other things to keep you up. That's right, because you don't always have something to grab onto. Look up and look down. You're stimulating a new, vis a new circle, semicircular canal, by looking up and down versus sideways. There's three semicircular canals. The other one is sort of oblique. Good. Okay, let's take away the eyesight. If you want to, you can still look side to side. That takes away your eyesight and adds vestibular stimuli. You do not have to do that, though. You can just keep your head still. It's up to you and what challenge you want to give yourself. Each challenge makes you stronger so that you're more capable when accidents happen. Catch yourself, recover. All right, shake it off. Other foot. So if you were tandem, the other foot is behind, weight-bearing. The front foot is not weight-bearing very much. Wobble your ankle and teach it its job. Tell it that it's going to have a big job to wiggle you around and balance you. Tighten your core. All right, let's look side to side. Eyes are open for this one. Good. Good. Sharon, that looks a little easy. Bring your foot in front, right in front of the other foot. You can still put it on the floor, but bring it right there. You go. Now you're in tandem, like on a log. I think that's a little better challenge because you look too successful, I'm afraid. Up, down. 
Whoa. Notice I'm using my hands. If you want to ch up your challenge, you don't use your hands, right? All right, let's try eyes closed. You can either keep your head still, eyes closed, or you can turn your head and eyes closed. Really tricky, but it's totally up to you. Knowing that a balanced challenge should be challenging if you accidentally tap down a few times, but if you're constantly tapping down or hanging on, it's too much. All right, hold, let it go. Sorry, shake it out. Good. Does that feel all right? So your challenge of your head motions can be, you know, you're walking in a grocery store. Every time you walk, you're on one foot for a moment of time. So I'm walking, I'm on one foot, and I look and I look. Oh, hi, Susan, how are you? Or, oh, hi, Susan, how are you? From six feet. <laughs> so these things are natural. The looking, oh, you've got a bird you want to watch, or there's an airplane in the sky. You want to be able to do all these motions and not tip over, right? OK, on to the mat. Thirty minutes or so, twenty-eight minutes maybe of Pilates. Start with your posture on the floor. Greg, you gonna be okay there? You can still see me, okay? Because uh, once I lay down, the camera may be in your way. All right, you're tightening your core. This is called an isometric. So you don't actually change your meterage. ISO is same. My shoulders are back. I feel my ribs tucked in. Under everything else, I've got some washboard down there somewhere. Exhale, imprint. Inhale, let that lift off. So now you're rocking your pelvis. Similar to what you did with the belly dancing, right? So with the belly dancing, you also had a little bit of a rocking of your pelvis. Imprint and start to roll your hips up and off the mat, squeezing your gluteals. Breath in and roll back down. In this activity, I want your back to be relaxed. So if you think of relaxing your back and tightening your core, it's kind of a hard, uh, activity but you want your back extensors to be fairly relaxed your core to be pulling that pubis bone up to the ceiling your glutes to be lifting your hips next time you're going to stay up and we'll hold for five seconds And pulse for five, four, three, two, one, and hold. And pulse for five, four, three, two, one. You got one more in you, I hope. If not, take a rest, hold. Last one, pulse, five, four, three, two, one, and roll on down. Good. Left leg down, right knee into your chest. Lift and lower the right leg. Oh, sorry, right knee is in your chest. Left leg is lifting and lowering. Belly button's pulled in, a nice neutral back. Good. Hold that leg up there toward the ceiling and dorsiflex the foot back. Make a little circle. You notice how much your body wants to wobble side to side? Try not to let your body wobble. Everything's off the floor, so it's darn hard, right? Change direction. It's a little tiny circle, and you're just trying to stretch that hamstring and use your hip control, pelvis control. Bend it to tabletop and lay it flat on the floor. Straighten your right leg to the ceiling. Give it a little hamstring stretch. So you might be down here. That's okay. Wherever you're grabbing your leg, hamstring stretch. Okay, and lay the right leg on the floor, left knee into your chest, stretch that out. Lift and lower your right leg. 
Use your core to keep your back in neutral. It's very easy to just relax and let your back collapse into the floor every time. That's not what we want. We want you to work your core as you're lifting and lowering this leg. Keep the leg up to the ceiling and dorsiflex the foot. Make a tiny little circle and try not to roll around. Hold your body still. You're using your core now. Otherwise, you'd be falling over to the side, right? Change direction of your circle. It's tiny, it's small, it's squeezy. Good. Tabletop that right leg, lay it flat on the floor. Extend your left leg to the ceiling and stretch. All right, both legs to your chest. Curl your lower back like a potato bug. Lift your head, chest, shoulders up. Lower your head, chest, shoulders, keep your knees up. Lift your head, chest, shoulders, potato bug. So what we're doing is sustained pressure of your bottom off the mat. I lift my head, chest, shoulders up. I use my hands and make that potato bug. And then I relax my upper half and try to keep my butt up. And I come back up. And then I relax my tummy and I let my lower half work hard. Last one, up to a potato bug. Relax back down. You can lower your body, tabletop your legs, ump your arms to a T. Start your spine twist, supine. Drift to one side, pull back. Make it small at first so you're sure to do it very well. And also you're stretching out. So when you first start, you may not be able to go as far as you will by the last one. Feel that stretch in your waist as your shoulder is attached to the floor and your farthest knee is lifting away from you. Pulling away, pulling, 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 and then use that stretched muscle to pull you back to center. Can you point your toes for me, Jim? That's it. All right, pause here for a minute. We're going to try corkscrew with knees bent. So you drift your knees to one side, and then you circle around, come back up. Circle to the other side, drift, and circle around. How low you go is up to your comfort. Try to finish at a tabletop position rather than knees to chest. So when I finish my circle, I'm at tabletop. As I go low around my circle, I'm stretching my tummy. You can also be conservative and you don't go very low, no problem. It's inhale drift, exhale circle. Try one more for me. Inhale drift, exhale circle those legs. Good, that sets you up for when we do a corkscrew. For real, your legs are straight, right? So that's a modified version is the bent knee. Feet on the floor, one, two. I always land and lift my feet one, two, right? To put less stress on my back, less stress on my core, less stress on any diastasis or rectus. When I use two legs up, I really have to use my core to brace me and then lift. Otherwise, you end up using rectus abdominis and splitting those tummy muscles. So one, two is one way to avoid that. All right, feet are on the floor, hands are behind your head. Pull on your head a little bit. Neutral lower back, breath in. Exhale, lift your chest up, look at your knees. Breath in and land. Breath in and lift. Breath in and land. I know a lot of times I close my eyes when I do Pilates. That's fine, but right now I'd like you to keep your eyes open and really look at those knees. In your peripheral vision, you'll also see your pubis bone. See if your trouser, your line has lifted up at all. Try to settle it back down if it did on accident. Exhaling as you lift or lower. Breath in as you pause. Next time up, you can either rest at the floor or you can rest at the top. Depends on your comfort level, how tired you are. So either rest by grabbing your thighs or rest on the floor. Try to let your tummy really rest. Okay, hands behind your head. Lift up if you were on the floor. 
and we're going to add a twist. Exhale, rotate. Inhale, back. Put your feet on the floor for me, Jim. Good. Exhale, rotate. Inhale, back. <sighs> Try to stay up the whole time, lifting your shoulder blades off the mat. Your head never lands on the floor, right? Only your shoulder blade might land a little bit and then try to keep it up and off in the middle. Again, try to keep your eyes open, look to the outside of your knee, then the middle of your knees, then the outside of your knee. You got two more rotations in you? If not, take a little rest. If you do, you got one more. Good, fingertips up. Hold it, hold it, hold it for three, two, one. Land on down, legs long, arms long. Stretch for a moment. And then four roll-ups. So you can do your roll-ups assisted. Inhale, look. Exhale, roll up. That's an assisted roll-up. Okay, Jim, I think this is a good one for you, okay? Grab your thighs, help yourself up, help yourself down. Good. It's also a nice way if you have any kind of healing stuff in your tummy, if your tummy's still healing, give yourself a little hand. Make it as smooth and controlled as possible. Good. Try to really pull your tummy in. Jim, let me see that again. Look. Pull your tummy in. Pull your tummy in. Good. Try to curl, 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 curl. Good. All right, let's stay up at the top. Roll halfway down. Scoop and look. Come back in. So when I say scoop, I want you to think about hollowing out your tummy. Hollow out your tummy. Good. Really scoop it out. Scoop. Good, and you can be as high up as you want. Just being right on top here and trying to accent that tummy in is hard already. So you don't have to lower yourself if you're having any pain. All right, let's pause here. If you need a little rest, you come up and give yourself a rest. If you don't need a rest, don't take it. Right, you're hollowing out your tummy. We're gonna creep down a little bit more as you scoop. So this time I want you to feel some of your back land. Back up, and then scoop and lower. And back up. Personally, I don't really get to any of my back landing because my butt is too big. But you want to lower as you scoop. Back up. Lower as you scoop. Scoop, scoop. Back up. How about two more? Look and turn. So you really get your obliques. Turn, turn, turn. That's it. So you might not get as far down. Good. And give it a little break. Use your hands. Hold your back up tall. Good. And just roll to your side, Carolyn, to sit up. Roll. Yep. There you go. Then sit up. And then just use your hands under your legs. Sit up nice and tall. All right. One hand up. And back down. So now you're going to straighten your back as much as possible. One up. Back down. Good. I'm in a relaxed way doing that, right? I'm as relaxed as I could possibly be supporting myself as much as I want. This is easier, right? Harder, my knees are together, and I don't hang on. So you decide what you want to do. Legs together is harder. Good. Both hands up. If it's just a fraction of a second, that's okay. It can just be a fraction of a second. Otherwise, you can hold it up. And we're going to add that curl that we did at the start, okay? So I can, I'll show you. What we did at the start was we did a little squat, and then we curled, and then we lifted up, right? So this will be a little bit easier way. <sighs> Otherwise, I'm going to curl with my arms up and finish up. Curl with my arms up. <sighs> so then you really feel all of it happening in the tummy. Really pull that belly button into your spine. This is more about your activation than the actual uh, difficulty. Good. Last one. Curl, curl, curl. And back up. Place your hands behind you. Palms towards your bottom or out if your hands don't like towards your bottom. Straighten your legs. Exhale, lift. Inhale, tap. 
Exhale, lift. Inhale, tap. I'm hinging at the hips, lifting my hips up, settling my hips down for a tap. Two more. Exhale, lift. Inhale, tap. Last one. Exhale, lift. Inhale, tap. Good. Roll to your side. Actually, sorry, not roll. Just sit to your side. Let your shoulder collapse. Push it away. So I'm going to move through the levels. You're always welcome to stay at an earlier level, but we're going to finish with the ultimate level rainbow today. We're doing the arc or the rainbow today. So again, I'm always going to start with the simple and then go more and more and more and more. You can stay down at a previous level. Lift your hip up, tap your hip down. Lift your hip up, tap your hip down. Good. Keep your arm up, keep your hip up. Curl, tuck, tuck, tuck. Try to reach your hand to your back pocket. Open it up, tap down. Sorry, I did the twist instead, didn't I? Modified twist, that's okay. We could do four of these. Two more. Up, the hips up. Then twist, reach for your back pocket. Open up. Tap down. Is that our fourth? This is our fourth. Okay, give that arm a little rest. I'm sorry, I screwed up because I got distracted. And I did a, a twist instead of an arc. But now we'll do the arc. Okay, so after I come up to a T or whatever this is called, let's extend that top leg. Then you're going to arc over. So I hollow out my tummy, come back, and settle down. Lift up to this T, call it a T, arc over, back to the T, settle down. Two more like this, then we're going to make it harder. And back down. Last one. Good. Give that hand a little rest. Sharon, is your hand okay? Uh-huh. So just stay on the forearm and practice the shoulder blade apart. And maybe hips up or not, okay? Or just like holding that half plank. But try to build the strength with what you can in your tolerance. Okay, moving on. Legs straight. Or sorry, legs are, uh, front leg is, top leg is in front. Uh, swap your legs, Jim. Top leg is in front. There you go. And they're bent. You're going to get ready to push off with those feet and come to a T. Tap down. Come to a T. Push. That's it. Make it as straight as possible. So push with your legs so your head goes toward the ceiling, Jim. Push with your legs. That's it. And your mat is a little slippery. You can put your feet on the floor if you want. Your mat is stretching out, so it's not helping you very much. Two more. Last one. Good. So that may be already t enough of a challenge for some of you. So uh, Greg and James, if you have the strength, try four twists, uh, not twists, arcs. And those of you that are already pooped, you can just stay with one thing for four more reps, something that feels comfortable for you. Like maybe a side plank, Jim. Okay. All right. Coming up. The arc is like that. Exhale, arc. Inhale, make your T. Exhale, tap your hips. Inhale, T. Exhale, arc. Inhale, T. Tap your hips. Two more. Inhale, T. Exhale, arc. Inhale, T. Tap. Last one. Woo! And then we're going to stretch that side out that you just used. That arm should be a little bit pooped, right? Mostly in the arm and the waist, right? And maybe the bottom glute, the glute that's toward the floor. Swap your legs around and go to the other side. We started with just collapsing the shoulder and then pushing it away. So you're just checking in with your body. If this already felt pretty tough or uncomfortable, that may be as far as you go. You can always do that on your forearm too. Then we're lifting the hips up, putting the hips down. When you lift them up, you can't really tell from this angle. I'll go from another angle. I'm shoving my hips forward so I make a straight line, even if it's not straight with my mat. So I'm here and I push my hips forward so I'm a straight line. Then I sit my bottom back, then push my hips forward. 
Good. Really push your hips forward, Jim, so that your hips are in line with that knee on the floor. Push, push, push those hips forward. There you go. All right, let's try the tuck. So we came up, then we tucked around, or twist, sorry. Tap your hips down, back up. So sometimes you hear me say the word tap, that's because I'd like you to just gently tap your hips, but this is harder to tap than just the rest. So if you need to, you can always rest. You can settle down, you can give it a break, and then go back up. But if you don't need to, just tap. Is that enough on that side? All right, give it a little moment's break, then we're gonna push, okay? So now my top leg is in front of my bottom leg and my feet are ready to push off. I've got a grip on my mat and I'm going to push forward, right? Make a T. Come back down. Push up. Come back down. So you're weight bearing a lot onto your arm. That's why it can be painful and you have to work up to this. If you don't feel comfortable with this, you're keeping your bottom leg down and you're just doing a single lift. All right, you ready to try four, not twists, we're doing arcs today. Four arcs. So if you want to keep your bottom leg down, I'll show you that variant. Jim, this may be good for you. Keep the bottom leg down, arc, come back to a T, and settle the hip down. See how my bottom leg stays on the floor? Okay, otherwise, if you want to try the full thing, try four of them. So I've got something in my contacts. If you need the breath pattern, it's inhale up, exhale arc, inhale T, exhale tap. I got one more, sorry. I got to build up the strength too. All right, stretch that out. Oh boy. Very nice. So you built up your arm strength, right? Yeah, let's just do a little bit of push-ups, lay on our tummy, back extension, finish with 100, okay? So you got three more challenges. So for the front, um, you can do push-ups. I'm just going to time 90 seconds. How's that? Whatever you do on your front is up to you. It can be a push-up, it can be a plank, it can be the toe taps. Okay, I'm going to time... Huh? Oh, we're going to do that one at the end. Don't worry, you still have time to get tortured. Okay, go. One minute and a half of either a plank or you can work on your push-ups. You can always do your plank with your knees down. Hips forward for me, Jim. Hips forward. Push your hips forward. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. There you go. So you're going to either hold that or you can play around. You can do whatever you want, but you can't let your butt go to the ceiling anymore. There you go. Whatever you choose to do in your plank position is up to you. Whether it's push-ups, just holding it. Always you can go on your forearms, it's up to you. Always you can go on your knees. You're at 45 seconds, so you're halfway through. So if you're pooped, you might want to think about something a little easier, right? If you're not pooped, work a little harder. You probably won't regret it. I say probably, but you know. Stay safe. You know your own limits. You got 25 seconds left, and you've done a whole 90 seconds in plank. Knees can always be down anytime for a break. You got 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, Four, three, two, one. Relax. Woo, that's tough. We usually do 60 seconds, huh? But I'm hoping to learn or teach you how to cope. How to make yourself go down when you need to go down. Make it harder when you need to make it harder. All right, lay on your tummy. Simple back extension. Before we do the hundreds, so my hands are by my hips, my face is on the floor. Inhale, lift my nose off the floor, squeeze my shoulder blades. Exhale, tap my nose to the floor. Inhale, lift. Exhale, tap. 
I feel my hands slide down my trousers as my shoulder blades squeeze back. Inhale, lift, squeeze those shoulder blades. Exhale, tap. See if you can relax your buttocks during this. We're not doing any leg lifts right now. See if you can relax your butt cheeks and just use your upper back muscles. Good, for the last one, either hold in this position or lift your arms up, hold your Superman legs up. 10 more seconds of holding, whatever that is for you. Five, four, three, two, one, relax. Child's pose. Ooh, I feel nice and stretched out. Roll onto your back and we're gonna finish with the 100. That means that Friday we're finishing with the teaser, so don't try to talk me out of it, all right? All right, feet are in tabletop. Unless you like a beginner version, then feet are on the floor. Arms are overhead. Exhale, lift your head, chest, shoulders, move your arms, reach them towards your heels. Breath in and begin. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Inhale, two, three, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Inhale, two, three, four. Five. So you make this as good as you can make it, right? Push your lower back down into the floor. That's 40. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Inhale, two, three, four, five. That's 60. Push a little harder. Dig deeper. Lift your chest up a little higher. Push your belly button down into the floor a little deeper. If your legs are straight, squeeze those quads. Inhale, two, three. We got 10 more. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Relax. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right, let's do a roll down together. Standing roll down. Be careful as you get up in case you're little dizzy. Feet sit bones width apart. Take a breath in and reach up. Mm, then let your arms melt down. Breath in. Roll down one vertebrae at a time. Using your core to fold in half and roll down. Breath in. Oh, sorry, let's nod our head here a little bit. I like that. Nod your head. Shake your head a little bit. Let all that tension out of your neck. Arms are dangling. Take a breath in and roll back up. Knees are nice and soft. Tuck that pelvis. Finish with stacking your head on your body. Well done. Happy Tuesday. Thank you, guys. Before you all leave, um, I'm just going to get these people on the voice here.